Okay. Good morning, one and all. Um, Sharmila A, Assistant Professor, Department of Civil Engineering, Vidyavadan College of Engineering, Mysuru. Welcome to GATE Coaching uh, 2023 on Environment Engineering. I'm concentrating on uh, Wastewater Engineering. Um, <coughs> so from the previous year question paper uh, analysis, uh, so it can be understood that uh, from Environment Engineering, normally uh, 235 questions has been appeared in the previous uh, GATE uh, sessions. So this subject, uh, wastewater treatment, comprise of uh, uh, the content like sewage system, uh, quantity of uh, domestic wastewater, primary and secondary treatment, effluent discharge standards, and sludge disposal. <coughs> First and foremost thing, let us understand. <coughs> so how the wastewater will be uh, generated and uh, what is the fate of wastewater? So from the source, the wastewater will be collected through the sewage system and it's treated and it's released to either to air solid or uh, form of solid or effluent to atmosphere land and surface water so first and foremost thing we'll know what exactly is wastewater any used water which has been affected by domestic industrial commercial uses are known as uh, wastewater and the composition or the characteristics varies from one to another depending on the source and the activity involved in the generation of wastewater so normally wastewater comprise of 99% 99.9% uh, 99 of water and 0.1% of uh, the organic matter microorganism or inorganic compounds so this 0.1% can again be classified if we take uh, that as uh, 1000 mg per liter out of 1000 mg per liter 800 mg per liter will be considered as uh, dissolved solids uh, which is very difficult to remove uh, from and uh, which requires high uh, degree of treatment and 200 mg per liter, which again can be categorized into uh, 130 mg as mg per liter as settleable solids and 70 percent uh, uh, 70 mg per liter as non-settleable solids. And again, depending again on this uh, settleable and non-settleable solids, the treatment uh, will vary. And normal method of disposal of uh, wastewater is uh, to the water bodies. So let us know. For designing aspects, uh, what exactly is a sewage system? So it's a fundamental principle of sanitation uh, for a community to remove the uh, waste component from the premises immediately. So normally it should be done uh, so fast that should not create any harm to the uh, environment. So let us know uh, the few definitions related to wastewater. Sullage. Normally the wastewater released from bathrooms, kitchens and washing are considered as sullage. And which do not include wastewater discharged from laboratories, hospital, operation theater, and slaughterhouse, which is rich in uh, high rich in organic matter, sewage, dilute mixture of waste of um, various types like residential, public, and industrial places. Uh, it also includes sludge water and foul wastewater discharged from water chlorides, urinals, hospitals, stables, storm water. So normally the surface runoff. Uh, during and after rainfall uh, is called as uh, storm water so which enters the inlet and it is it doesn't have any uh, foul uh, sm smell unless otherwise it is mixed with the sewage sanitary sewage so obtained from residential buildings and industrial establishments uh, extremely foul and usually it has to be carried only in the conduits underground domestic sewage so waste water released from laboratory basins urinals, water closets and houses, offices and institutions, highly foul um, because it consists of both uh, waste released in the form of night soil and urine. And night soil start uh, putrefying and give offensive smell. So it has to be removed immediately after once it is generated. And it usually consists of high, uh, uh, a huge quantity of bacteria with uh, uh, variation uh, with various uh, types. Uh, from the waste release from uh, the patients and uh, great care has to be taken while handling and disposal. Industrial wastewater consists of spent water uh, from the industries and commercial areas and uh, degree of uh, foulness also depends on the types of uh, the industry and the process involved. Sewers, underground pipes usually which is uh, preferred for carrying out the sewage or wastewater at, uh, from the generation point to the disposal point. 
Sewerage is the entire system of collection carrying and disposal of uh, wastewater through sewers. So for the designing of any wastewater treatment plant or uh, for a conveyance system, so normally we usually prefer some um, um, information regarding uh, what is the uh, quantity of wastewater generation and uh, the uh, time and uh, is it separate system or combined system. So in that, the first concept is dry weather flow. <coughs> Domestic uh, wastewater or industry wastewater collectively called as uh, dry weather flow and it doesn't consist of any storm water. So the method of disposal of wastewater uh, will be either uh, to the receiving water body or to the on land. So disposal by dilution where large receiving water bodies are available uh, or if the water body is not available, uh, sufficient land is available, then land resource disposal will be preferred. So sanitary engineering starts uh, from the point where the water supply engineering ends and it usually comprises of collection works, treatment and disposal. So system of collection will be categorized into three different types, uh, sorry, oh, two different types, conserving system and water carry system. So this flow chart uh, indicates the type of uh, system usually preferred for carrying a wastewater. So one is conservancy and water carry system. In the water carry system, so it is of three different types, separate system, combined and partially combined system. So conservancy system, normally when uh, uh, the system uh, is uh, sometimes uh, called as a dry system, where the quantity of water generated is lesser, human excreta are collected separately from the conservancy system. And uh, after the removal of night soil, it is taken out uh, to the from the outside the town and uh, buried in trenches. So normally this is converted to excellent manure after two or three years. And silage and uh, storm, storm water will be uh, carried separately in this particular system. And uh, treatment, without treatment, the uh, storm water or silage water can be allowed to the nearby water bodies. Water carrier system. Here, the, it is easy to collect and uh, convey the wastewater. So, experimental matter is mixed up with a large quantity of water, and usually, uh, treatment will be preferred, which is uh, uh, outside the city, and disposed after treatment, uh, depending on the disposal method. So, here, ninety-nine percent of point nine percent will be water, and remaining point one percent will be solids. So both conservancy and water carry system has its own advantages and disadvantages. Uh, cheaper cost uh, with respect to a conservancy system, uh, but high cost for water carry system. And foul smell will be there uh, in a conservancy system, which is uh, uh, the foul smell is very less with respect to water carry system. Aesthetic appearance of the city uh, will be will not be improved in case of conservancy system, but good aesthetic appearance can be uh, preferred with the water carry system. The sewerage system, uh, it can be of three different types, separate system, combined system, partially combined or partially separate system. So this picture indicates that how the collection will be done and whether it is uh, separately uh, conveyed or mixed. So let us know first about the separate system. Separate system, uh, normally two set of uh, sewers will be laid and where the storm water is collected separately and disposed and the uh, sanitary sewer will be carried in a uh, separate sewers. So advantages is size of the sewers are small and um, uh, sewage load on a treatment will be lesser and storm water can be discharged without any treatment Disadvantages, uh, being a very uh, uh, small diameter, cleaning is a little bit tougher and uh, frequent choking problem will be absorbed often and often. Combined sewage system, so uh, here both a uh, strong water and a uh, wastewater can be uh, is preferred in the same sewers. Advantages is the size is very large, large hence the choking problem is very less. And also um, the economy wise, it is better than the separate system. Disadvantages, 
the size of uh, the sea was being large it's very difficult to handle and to transport and uh, one main uh, disadvantage is the treatment plant treatment plant uh, it's unacademic because the load on the treatment plant is very huge partial combined or partial separate system so depending on the uh, rain water in a spe spe specific places so normally this can be advantages or disadvantages where in some places during, during a rainy season that is uh, it enters both wastewater and as well as the storm water enters and uh, um, the advantages is the size of the sea is not so large or small combines the advantages of both the, uh, the separate system and the combined system and the silting problem is usually will not be absorbed in uh, the partially combined or the partially separate system the disadvantages is during dry weather the velocity of the flow uh, is very less so choking may up, up, occur Suitable conditions, uh, preferably for separate uh, sewer system. And when the rainfall is uneven, uh, we can opt this method. And sanitary sewage has to be pumped uh, with uh, uneven uh, levels. The drainage area is uh, uh, steep, allow to run off quickly. And sewers will be have to be constructed in a rocky uh, stratum. Um, this combined would be more expensive. For combined system, rainfall is even throughout the year so there we can prefer the combined system both sanitary sanitary sewage and storm water have to be pumped and uh, effective or quick flow has to be provided so let us know uh, one question regarding this a combined sewer is a uh, one which transports so both uh, domestic uh, sewage and the storm water uh, sewage uh, domestic sewage and industrial Domestic sewage and overhead flow, domestic sewage and industrial and storm water. So answer is because in a combined, both uh, domestic sewage and storm water will be carried. Quantity of our sanitary sewage and storm water. So uh, normally to calculate this, so we have to uh, understand what are the data that is required. So it can depends on the uh, the following uh, factors like design of the sewage scheme as well as to dispose. Uh, a treated uh, uh, sewage efficiently, a size, shape, and the depth of the sewers, and size of the pumping unit. So, how we can estimate the sanitary sewage? Um, it can be classified into sanitary sewage and storm water. So, sanitary sewage is nothing but a dry weather flow, so which includes the domestic wastewater released from residential area, and storm water consists only the water uh, through the runoff. So estimation of a design of discharge sewers. So first and foremost thing for any uh, design of a sewers or a treatment plant. So this is the first uh, factors which has to be considered that what is the quantity of wastewater discharge. So total quantity of wastewater or sewage generated per day at the end of design period. So we'll come to know what exactly is the high period in the next slide. So it's, it's equal to forecasted population or at the end of the design period multiplied by per capita sewage generation. So we'll we should know that what is a per capita sewage generation. So for per capita generation, normally uh, the water supply that is LPCD value will be considered. So based on LPCD value, percentage approximately 75 to 80% of the per capita demand of water will be considered. That is LPCD multiplied by 75 or 80% of that LPCD value. The increase in the water demands usually occurs due to increase in the living standards, betterment in economic condition, charge, uh, changes in the habit of a people, enhanced demand or of public utility. So a per capita demand in a water normally varies with these aspects or factors. So normally in an average in India, 135 LPCD of water will be considered as a LPCD value. So factors affecting the quantity of sewage flow is one is population, the type of area, rate of water supply, Infiltration and exfiltration. These are the uh, major factors which has to be considered for uh, calculating the design period. So others is the habit of people, number of industries, waste water pressure. So can also be considered. 
population. So quantity of sanitary sewage mainly depends on the population. As it increases, the quantity also increases uh, type of area covered. So rate of water supply. Uh, rate of sewage is less than the water supply. So loss as leakage in pipes or reduction in a loss sprinkling manufacturing process, etc. And also additional is surface drainage, groundwater infiltration, water supply with the private wells. So groundwater infiltration and exfiltration. So this is also one of the main factor that has to be considered in the design aspect. Quantity affects the groundwater infiltration to joints. It also depends on the nature of the soil, material of sewers, type of stones in a sewer line, workmanship uh, in a lay in a sewers and position of underground water table. So infiltration, so which adds the, some quantity of uh, the water to the wastewater quantity seasonally uh, uh, due to elevated groundwater entering the drainage system and primarily occurring through defects in a pipe network. So exfiltration, the losses through the pipes pipeline resulting in reduction of conveyance flow and due to leakages from defects in sewer pipe, uh, pipeline walls as well as overflow discharge into manholes, cham chambers, etc. Some other factors that has to be considered is poor construction and the pipe uh, joint fittings, root penetration, corrosion, soil condition and traffic loading, as well as aggressive groundwater. So for future period, uh, for a provision has to be made in the design of uh, capacity of various components and sewage schemes known as design periods. So I told you already, depending on the activity involved, the design period usually varies. So we'll know what is that. Depends on ease and difficulty in expansion, amount and availability of investment, anticipated rate of uh, population growth, including shift in communities, industries, and commercial investment, hydraulic constraints of the sieve system, uh, life of the material and equipment. So design period for different components of the sievers. Laterals less than 15 centimeter diameter for the full development. Truck car and main sievers normally 40 to 50 years. Treatment units, 15 to 20 years. Pumping plant, 5 to 10 years. So one main factors which usually affects the quantity of sewage is the variation in sewage flow. Due to the uh, uh, demand of water, so normally on a daily basis, the quantity of waste generated also varies. So fluctuation can be categorized into seasonal, daily and hourly. A seasonal variation uh, due to climatic effect more water is used in summer on a daily basis on uh, local con uh, conditions involving uh, habits, customs of the people. So there is variation of the water consumption in hourly basis, varying rates of water consumption on a hourly basis will also be considered. So peak flow, first peak flow usually generally occurs at the late morning. About 200% of the average flow will be considered for calculating this. And second peak flow generally occurs in the early evening between 6 to 9 p.m. And minimum flow occurs during night time. So importance is a maximum minimum rates of the sewage flow or controlling factors in the design of sewers. So sewers must be an ample capacity to carry the maximum flow and also to ensure sufficient velocity to produce the self-cleaning uh, which would be available in a, in a case of minimum flow. Design of sewers. Estimation of sanitary sewage normally is the one main criteria for the design of sewers. So we came to know that how, how the quantity of uh, sewage uh, can be calculated. And normally for a design of sewers, a design period is 30 years. And the groundwater infiltration to joints will also be considered uh, for a period of 30 years. And uh, depends on the workmanship in laying a sewers. Mainly the infiltration or the works through joints depends on the workmanship and the height of the groundwater table, materials of the sewers. So we'll kind of concentrate on this aspect in the next nature of soil, etc. Design criteria of the sewers. So normally design the main two factors, which is considered the discharge and the velocity. And design period normally varies from 20 to 30 years. And specific gravity of the sewers, as we already understood that 99.9% .9 is the water and the so the specific gravity is uh, nearly equal to 1. And velocity of the flow, it should lies between a self-cleaning velocity and a limiting velocity. We'll know what is that self-cleansing velocity. Necessary to maintain a minimum velocity in a sewer line to ensure that a suspended solids do not deposit or cause any choking problems. So it is called as self-cleansing velocity. 
it is determined by considering the particle size specific weight of the suspended solids in a sewage in a sewage and also one more thing along with the self cleansing velocity we should understand that the maximum velocity should not exceed because sometimes abrasions will be created due to high velocity hydraulic formula for determining the flow velocity so this is the main thing so which normally we prefer for cleaning the velocity a uh, cam shield uh, formula v is equal to square root of 8 into beta s minus 1 into gd by f so where v is a self cleansing velocity and uh, beta is a dimensionless constant whose value depends on the characteristics of the sediment present in the present S is the specific gravity of the sediment and G is the acquisition due to gravity and D is the diameter of the solid particles. And the minimum velocity which we have to um, maintain. So it is the velocity at which the solid particles will remain under suspension. Criteria for determining the minimum velocity has to be considered. So for combined sievers, it is 0.75 meter per second. And uh, in the table, we can easily identify that if the diameter of the sewer is 15 to 20 centimeter, then the normal velocity watch we have to maintain for uh, this minimum velocity is 1 m meter per second. And if it is 30 to 60.7, more than 60.6. And the minimum maximum velocity. So maximum velocity is also known as limiting velocity. If the velocity goes on increases normally, abrasion of the materials uh, takes place due to presence of soil, sand, grit, and gravel. And limiting velocity depends upon the materials of sewers. So normally, depending on the uh, uh, maximum velocity, sometimes the material sewer will also uh, vary. So for a sewer material, if it is vitrified, uh, limiting velocity is 4.5 to 5.5. It is a cement concrete 2.5 to 3 uh, meter per second. And an ordinary brick aligned, it is 1.5 2.5. Earthen channels, 0.6 to 1.2. So here we can easily understand that uh, uh, depending on the uh, type of uh, sewer materials, uh, the limiting velocity so that it should not create any abrasive action on the uh, inner side of the sewers. So minimum sewer size uh, should not be less than 15 centimeter because if it is less than 15 centimeters, the choking problem is the one of the major disadvantage. Recommended size is 20 centimeters and in hilly places, it may be 8 10 centimeters because due to natural uh, gravitation flow. Standard pipe size are 20 centimeters, 30 centimeters, 35, 45 centimeters with increase of 5 centimeters up to 2 meter. Uh, sewer grades, uh, uh, if it, it is the uh, slope by which the sewers are laid. So generally, the, uh, it follows the natural slopes of the ground, not steeper than 1 uh, in 20 and slope of 1 in 40 to 1 in 80 for a house sievers connected to public sievers. Gradient for self cleaning velocity of at least 0.6 meter per second has to be preferred. So minimum gradient uh, of a sievers depending on the diameter is 20 centimeter 0.006. And for 100 uh, centimeters, he was uh, 5 into 10 power of minus 3. Hydraulic formula, Chedji's formula. So normally to calculate the velocity, Chedji's formula is usually preferred. V is equal to C into square root of R into S. Where V is the velocity of flow, Chedji's constant C or coefficient or hydraulic mean depth and S is a slope or a gradient of sievers. Different formulas uh, for the calculation of Chedji's coefficient can be preferred. It is uh, Kutra's expressions or uh, Basin's formula or Hazen William formula uh, to calculate the velocity or Manning formula. Normally, Manning's formula is also uh, preferably preferred. Uh, v is equal to n by n r to the power of 2 by 3 s to the power of half. And Kripen Buck formula. So, Manning formula for a coefficient uh, n. So, that depends mainly on the type of the sievers materials used. For a cement concrete, um, good interior surface, 0 0.013 and for a fail, 0 0.015. So this is usually preferred to maintain a minimum velocity. Hydraulic elements of the sievers, most commonly used uh, sievers or circular. And hydraulic uh, uh, elements for different flow conditions are uh, shown in this figure. A diameter of the sievers is uh, capital D and um, uh, 
uh, small letter d is nothing but the flow at the depth of the flow of wastewater so circular uh, c was running full for that the area of uh, flow section will be considered as a is equal to pi by 4 d to the power of square where d is the diameter of the c wall wetted perimeter p is equal to pi into d and hydraulic mean depth r is equal to a by p so a is um, an area and p is the perimeter wetted perimeter so which is also is equal to d by 4 so using for manning formula uh, so v uh, is equal to 1 by an r to the power of 2 by 3 and s to the power of half is usually preferred and discharge can, uh, can be calculated using uh, a into v for a circular C was running partially full. So this formula will vary. But the central angle of theta uh, given by cos of theta by 2 is equal to 1 minus 2d by d. Where small letter d is nothing but a depth of flow of wastewater. For a depth, d is equal to d by 2 minus d by 2 cos theta by 2. Proportional depth d by d is half of. 1 minus cos of theta by 2. Similarly, we can calculate for the area, proportional area A by A, theta minus 360 minus sin theta by 2 pi. So, wetted perimeter P is equal to pi D theta by 360. Proportional perimeter P by uh, capital letter P that is theta by 360. Hydraulic mean depth A by P is given by d by 4 into 1 minus 360 sin theta by 2 pi theta. Similarly, we can calculate proportional hydraulic mean depth r by r. So, velocity of the flow. So, using that, we can calculate what is the proportional velocity v by v is given by r by r to the power of 2 by 3 into 1 minus 360 into sin theta by 2 pi theta whole to the power of 2 by 3. So, these equations can be usually preferred for calculation or for designing a C bus. Discharge Q is equal to A into V and proportional discharge Q by Q can also be calculated by theta by 360 into 1 by 360 sin theta by 2 pi r to the square of 5 by 3. So let us uh, solve one problem. So we just asked in the previous exam, a 20 centimeter diameter C bus is laid at a slope of 0.004 and is designed to carry a discharge at a depth of 10 centimeters with the mannings n is equal to 0 0.014 and design discharges. So already we came across uh, what are the equation that has to be preferred in calculation. So it's so quite a big uh, problem to solve, so which carries two marks. So depth of partial flow d is equal to 0 0.01 meter that has been specified. Uh, so we can use make use of the formula d is equal to d by 2 into 1 minus cos uh, d by 2. So we know what is d by uh, d point 1 and d by 2 is they have specified 20 centimeter point 2 by 2 and alpha will get us 180 degree. So area of partially filled circular sievers. So we know what is the equation a is equal to a into alpha by 360 minus sin alpha by 2 pi. So using that, we can calculate what is A and the design discharge Q is equal to A into V and we know what is the, what is the formula for V, 1 by N, R to the power of 2 by 3, S to the power of half. Using that, we can calculate what is R, 0 0.05 we get and the design discharge Q is equal to A into V. So we can calculate what is the discharge, 9.625 liter per second. At a peak discharge, uh, the depth of flow and the velocity are respectively. So, what is that? So, we can calculate this will be asked for to mass question. And for this, we have to refer a graph. So, with a partial flow of a circular uh, uh, sievers with a ratio of depth of to dia. So, using this graph, we can easily calculate what is the discharge. So, answer is 120 mm by 0.5 meter per second. So, to calculate the discharge, we can make use of that discharge uh, uh, information and to calculate the velocity, we can make use of this. So, like Q is equal to pi by 4 by 4 d square, r to the power of 2 by 3 and s to the power of half by n. So, using this equation, so we can calculate uh, what is the 
discharge q that is 0 0.05 meter cube per second and q by q we can uh, use this information as 0.4 so from this graph we can make use of that information that is 0.4 with q is equal to 0 0.05 and from the graph d by d is 0.4 so then it ends d is equal to 120 and again from the graph we can make use of v by v and it is 0.7 so it's finally calculated as 0.5 meter per second okay main trunk sievers larger than 0.9 meter in a diameter designed due to ventilation considering at a maximum discharge running at so uh, it is 3 by 4 full depth so construction so in the previous case while studying about those covering velocity or uh, limiting velocity we understood that even the materials is uh, one more main factor for finalizing what is the limiting factor so classification the type of savers with respect to these materials uh, we find n uh, different types that is asbestos bricks cast iron cement concrete plain or uh, reinforced corrugated iron sievers stone weight steel sievers plastic sievers wooden sievers Essential requirements for a good sever is uh, cost should not be so high, durability should uh, long last, impervious should be uh, either you should not uh, uh, prefer to uh, enter of water or should not uh, uh, allow the water to go outside that is infiltration, exfiltration, exfiltration. resistance to corrosion. Um, so normally this is one major problem which is observed in majority of the times uh, with respect to the sievers. So uh, the less corrosive materials should be preferred or uh, corrosive resistance material. Resistance to abrasion. Uh, so while the temp uh, velocity is you know, preferred with a high velocity, normally should not abrasion should not be created. So it should be resistance for abrasion. So weight, uh, very easy to handle and transport with less weight. Strength, uh, external load, it has to uh, take a high strength so types of sievers so has been so cement so just will concentrate on the types of sievers so asbestos cement normally the pipe size weighs from 10 to 100 uh, centimeter in a diameter uh, length 4 meter and here one main thing uh, no skill labor is required a special coupling called as ring of coupling or Simplex joint is usually preferred in this. This question may appear in the exam, complete exams. Pipes and joints are resistance to corrosion and uh, used for vertical transport of water. Advantage, lightweight. And uh, interior is so smooth and excellent hydraulic uh, efficient of sievers with a Manning's coefficient of n is equal to 0 0.01. But it has a disadvantage of uh, structurally not so strong and also. Uh, the corrosion may occur uh, occurs due to sulfuric acid. Brick sievers, uh, now it is absolute. Uh, normally, it is not preferred. So, but uh, in a decades, uh, many decades back, this was one uh, sievers which is usually prefer preferred for uh, uh, transporting a huge quantity of uh, wastewater and usually preferred for combined sievers. Cast iron and steel. So pipe with a stronger uh, uh, compressive strength and bending strength, so mostly, usually preferred as an outfall sievers. And 100% leak proof uh, uh, line to avoid the groundwater contamination and less resistance to uh, corrosion. And it's lined with the cement concrete or coat or epoxy. And usually your the joints which is preferred is a bell or spigot joint. Plain concrete uh, cement or uh, reinforced cement concrete. So uh, it has uh, it is available at 0.45 diameter and reinforced uh, cement pipe available at 1.8 meter diameter. It is in situ or a precast and uh, the quality is uh, quite good. And uh, for internal pressure, uh, the single cage reinforced less than 0.8 meter and uh, double cage reinforced uh, internal pressure or external it is more than 0.8 meter can be uh, it can resist that. Advantage of uh, stronger in tension and compression and uh, corrosion is lesser and easy uh, uh, for any desirable strength and it is in situ 
and economically it is uh, for the medium and large size uh, sizes of our sievers and disadvantages uh, can be corroded uh, if the concentration of H2SO4 is present in a, a wastewater and uh, carrying capacity is reduced due to corrosion and it should be protected by the uh, vertified uh, clay linings, corrugated iron steels or sievers used for storm water and made of metallic uh, thickness with a diameter of up to 450 centimeters. Plastic sievers, but is PVC. So it's nowadays it's so common. Internal drainage works uh, in the house can be, we can prefer a plastic uh, sievers available and a size of 75. Often smooth internal surface and uh, pipe is tough and rigid, easy to in fabricating and transportation. High density polyethylene pipes, not brittle like AC pipes, hence do not cause damage during hard joint by welding or with detachable joints up to 630 millimeter diameter, commonly used for conveyance of industrial wastewater, steel sievers. So if this is light uh, imperviousness and resistance and high pressure or uh, prime requirements, flexible and causal uh, absorbs vibration and shock uh, efficiently, used for uh, trunk or outfall sievers. So it can uh, usually withstand high pressure, impact of load and vibrations uh, better than uh, the other pipes. Metrified layer stoneways used in a house connections or for lateral sievers. A size 5 to 20 centimeters is internal, rarely manufactured with a diameter more than 90, joined by bell on cigarette uh, speak out flexible compression joints. Advantage resistance to corrosion. Interior surface is smooth and hydraulic efficient, i.e. impervious, strong in compression, durable and economic for uh, small diameter. Disadvantage, heavy, bulky and brittle, difficult to transport. Shape of sievers, circulars. Uh, so normally, uh, majority of the cases, we prefer circular uh, sievers. Laid below the ground level, sloping continuously towards the outfall. And designed to flow under gravity and uh, um, Construction materials requires uh, minimum and easy to construct and handle. Um, no corners, hence the deposition of organic matter can be lesser and possess excellent hydraulic property. Non-circular shape. Um, to develop self sensing velocity in a sievers, um, when flow is uh, minimum, uh, to affect economic and construction and also to carry uh, headway so that a uh, man can easily uh, replace and uh, also for cleaning. So commonly is not a class sievers are box or rectangular, egg-shaped, basket handle, section, horseshoe, parabolic, semicircular, circular and u shape. So these are the box rectangular type. This is egg-shaped um, sievers. And this is ba basket handle shape uh, sievers. Horseshoe sievers. It's parabolic sievers, semicircular sievers, semi elliptical, U shape. So, so requirements of good sievers is it should be uh, watertight, easy to construct, economical, and also tree roots should not penetrate and resistant to as acidic, calcul, and green uh, gaseous actions on a uh, sievers. A flexible uh, due to slight settlement, uh, settlements in the sewer lines should not get damaged. So one major uh, concept which you understand uh, is a cross, uh, crown corrosion in sewers. So what is this crown corrosion? Normally due to anaerobic condition, H2S gas is released in the sewers, sewers due to um, uh, choking of sewers. Okay. So it releases H2S gas so which may create a uh, um, corrosion into the inner liner of uh, diameter or inner liner of the sievers. So that is called as uh, crown corrosion. So asbestos cements are, uh, are normally joined by uh, which type of uh, joint by uh, which type of joints? This simplex joint. 
The best silver material today is hydrogen sulfide, which is one. Is it RCC, brick masonry, glazed stoneware, or asbestos cements? That is RCC. So the most prominent force acting on a groundwater sewer would be, is it compressor, tensile, bending force, all of this is compressive force. A best sewer material to raise is to is uh, corrosion. Uh, which one? It's glazed stone veil. So let us concentrate on the characteristics of uh, uh, wastewater. So it can be characterized in the physical, chemical, biological. And a physical, uh, so normally we can concentrate on color and odor and temperature. Stability. In a chemical characteristics, pH, chloride, nitrate, uh, fats, grease, and oil, sulfate, sulfates, and H2S, uh, DO, uh, that is dissolved oxygen, chemical oxygen demand, biochemical oxygen demand. So, chemical characteristics, organic compound, so all organic compounds containing carbon in the combination with one or the other material is called as the organic compounds. So, properties of organic compound is usually combustible, have lower melting point, boiling point, and less soluble in water. High molecular weight, an organic compound can serve to uh, source of uh, food or microorganisms. Classification of organic matter dif uh, difference in durability, uh, sorry, degradability that is biodegradable organic and non biodegradable organic organics. So, biodegradable organics that is nothing but uh, food for microorganism and easily and uh, fast in oxidizing, oxidized by the microorganism. Examples fat, uh, alcohol, human, or animal waste. So non-biodegradable organism is difficult and much more longer to biodegrade or uh, toxic to microorganism. That is PVC, pesticides, industrial wastewater, cellulose, phenolic, lignin acid. So let us major concentrate on biochemical oxygen demand because these questions will be often asked in a bit. So the quality of oxygen utilized by, uh, by the mixed population of microorganism to biologically degrade the organic matter in a wastewater under aerobic condition. Uh, e most important parameter in uh, water uh, pollution to control water pollution is measured as an organic pollution basis of estimation of oxygen needed for biological process and as an indicator of performance process performance. Test method normally VOD at 20 degrees considered. So for wastewater uh, samples, uh, if it is a snow, 0.1, 0 0.5, and 1%. Domestic one, 2.5 and 5 percent. Treat effluent, high it well and 2.25 percent. So dilution, uh, if the concentration is very high to get a uh, result, normally we go for dilution method. So let us know this stage. Uh, uh, the five days BOD maximum, 78 percent of the degradation of the organic matter will be absorbed. So in that uh, first stage of BOD uh, for the five days, Normally, uh, starting it is carbonaceous BOD and afterwards it is nitrogenous BOD. So, ultimate BOD will be usually um, uh, calculated to get the, uh, the BOD concentration. The carbonaceous oxygen demand curve can be expressed mathematically as BOD uh, T is equal to L0 into 1 minus 10 to the power of minus K into T, where BOD T is biochemical oxygen demand at the time T and mg per liter, L0 is ultimate BOD. And T is the time uh, in days, and K is the reaction constant per day. So, see, what the total amount of oxygen required uh, to chemically oxidize and biodegradable or non biodegradable organic matter. A rapid test to indicate uh, intensity of pollution in a river uh, is nothing but uh, the DO. So, the ultimate BOD in a wastewater for five days under eight constant at the base C are respectively 150 and 0.23 per day. So, what is the answer? Usually, we prefer this formula BOD5 is equal to L into 1 minus 10 to the power of minus KD into T. So, KD can be calculated as 0.434 into K. So, where K they have already specified in the problem 0.23. So, we can calculate what is this. And afterwards, we can calculate what is L. L is 219.605. So, I COD and BOD ratio of organic pollutant represents what actually the, that represents. It represents the low biodegradability of the pollutant. So chemical oxygen demand is always greater than BOD. What is that represents? So because the biodegradable uh, and the non-biodegradable organic matter is a uh, lesser than non-biodegradable organic matter. So wastewater sample diluted 100 times with the radiation had an initial uh, DO7 and after five days incubation 
ID is zero. What actually it represents? It's not possible to calculate. So uh, answer is three cannot be determined. So the BOD test five ml of uh, waste is added to two ninety five ml of aerated water. Initial DO concentration diluted sample is seven point eight. After five days, uh, twenty degree, the DO content in sample is reduced to four point five. The BOD of the waste water is. So we can make use of the equation. Uh, to calculate this, that is initial uh, DO minus final DO into dilution factor. Your dilution factor is uh, 5 by 300 because we are uh, considering that by 1 divided by. So hence it is 300 by 5. So we get it 204 mg per liter. So summary what we learned is sewer system, design of sewers, types of sewers, shape of sewers, characteristics of wastewater and calculations related to BOD. So thank you one and all. So we'll meet in the next session.